Hello and welcome to Pasture Establishment Basics. My name is Stephanie Smith and I'm an equine science and management student at the University of Kentucky. One of my projects as an intern with the UK Forage Group was to put together this video to teach you about the basics of pasture establishment. Here are the topics we'll cover today. Pastures are one of the most important aspects of a livestock operation, so knowing how to properly establish and care for your pastures is key. Strong forage stands and pastures benefit the animals by providing nutrients and hoof support. They also benefit the environment by cycling nutrients and pre preventing erosion. Producers will want to consider the type of livestock that will be using the pastures as that will affect the wear on high traffic areas as well as the best selection of forages for those pastures. Let's talk about some basic establishment requirements when it comes to getting a good stand of forage in your pastures. Following these recommendations will greatly increase your chances of success. You're going to want to start with the soil. Take a soil, set, soil test of each pasture yearly and submit it for testing. Refer to UK's AGR 16 publication, Taking Soil Test Samples, for details. Use the results of the test to apply any needed amendments to the pasture's soil. In Kentucky, lime and fertilizer are the most commonly needed amendments. Once you've gotten the soil sorted out, you're going to want to make sure that you're using the best seed possible. This means choosing high quality seed from an improved variety of grass that has been proven to perform well in Kentucky's conditions. Check out the University of Kentucky's variety trial reports for data on different varieties' performance. Choosing seed with a blue certified seed tag guarantees quality and purity from weeds. An important thing to remember if you are planting tall fescue or perennial ryegrass is that the turf types contain very high levels of endophytes and toxins. See our Endophytes 101 video for more information. When choosing tall fescue seed, we recommend not planting Kentucky 31 because it contains a toxic endophyte. Instead, buy safe novel endophyte varieties to reduce or avoid harm to your livestock. After choosing the best seed, make sure that you are planting enough of it at the correct time. Refer to this table for more information about seeding rates for different forages. Generally, you should plan to be seeding pastures in late summer or early fall because cool season grasses such as orchard grass, tall fescue, and Kentucky bluegrass have greater success of establishment when the weather is starting to cool down. Clovers can be seeded in either the spring or late summer, potentially by frost seeding, which we will talk about momentarily. For a full listing of forage crops and their seeding rates, see Grain, Forage, and Cover Crop Guide for Kentucky, AGR 18, under the Forage Species section of the UK Forage website. The next step is to use the best seeding method available to you. Generally, we suggest using a no-till drill for seeding pastures, especially for sloping ground or overseeding an already established stand. A no-till drill will allow you to overseed an already established pasture without ruining the grass stand that's already there. If completely re-establishing a pasture, then two summer sprays of glyphosate, four to six weeks apart, will kill the existing vegetation and provide a clean seed bed. Another option is to seed into a conventionally tilled seed bed and then firm the seed bed with a cultipacker or roller. Note that you can use a brilliant or trillion seeder instead, which combines packing and seeding so only one machine is needed. An alternative seeding method that is less accurate is to drag or harrow the pasture, broadcast seed, then drag again to cover the seed. If you choose this method after seeding, it is preferred to go over the pasture with a cultivator or roller to ensure that there is adequate seed to soil contact. No matter which method you choose to use, Make sure that the forage seed is sown at a depth of one-fourth to one-half inch to ensure the greatest chance of successful establishment. Lastly, as promised, we're going to mention frost seeding. This entails broadcasting clover seed on top of the ground during the winter and relying on the freeze-thaw cycle to work the seed into the soil. Frost seeding should only be used for red or white clover or annual lespedeza during late January or February. Make sure that the pasture is closely grazed or mowed to enhance soil-to-seed contact potential. 
Now that you've gotten the seed into the ground, you will need to control competition from the other pasture plants to maximize chances of successful grass establishment. If you're overseeding into an existing pasture, mow or closely graze the pasture before seedling to reduce the present vegetation. Doing this will help give the seedlings more room to grow and better access to sunlight. If you till to prepare the seed bed, that will temporarily control any established weeds, but you may need to follow that with herbicide. Make sure to follow the herbicide label because many have a waiting period between spraying and seeding or between seeding and follow-up spraying. If you don't adhere to the waiting period, you will kill the new grass seedlings. Another option for weed control is mowing, but this will only work when weeds that are taller growing than the grass seedlings. For example, mowing will not control dandelions, plantain, or crabgrass. One mistake to avoid when trying to establish a pasture or regain forage cover in specific areas of the pasture is not allowing the immature seedlings to become established before returning the pasture to full use. A stand is considered fully established when the grass seedlings are five to six inches tall, but they can still be damaged by grazing. Allow at least three to four months before grazing a newly established stand, and even then, use only light grazing pressure for several months. Note that it can take over a year for a grass stand to develop a strong, dense sod. One of the main reasons new stands or overseedings fail is because newly seeded pastures are overgrazed or grazed too soon. The best recommendation is to keep animals completely off the pasture and let the grasses grow to maturity the following spring, then use the first cutting for hay. After harvesting this first growth for hay, you can gradually return the pasture to use, not grazing the grass lower than four to five inches through rotational grazing. If it is not possible to keep the animals completely off the pasture, consider dividing the field and only seeding half at a time. This would allow half the pasture to be continued useful, while the other half is seeded that has time to grow and establish. On the next two slides, I've got a recommended method for complete reestablishment and developed by Dr. Ray Smith. We've talked about the concepts of these steps, and you can see here how they can be put into action. Feel free to pause and save these steps or even screenshot them. Now let's talk about choosing the best grass for your pastures. It is important to remember that different grasses have different tolerances for traffic and close grazing. Kentucky bluegrass and Bermuda grass form tight sods and are the most tolerant of close grazing and traffic. Orchard grass is the least tolerant to continuous grazing but does well under rotational grazing. Tall fescue is intermediate between Kentucky bluegrass and orchard grass in terms of grazing persistence. White clover is generally the preferred legume for pastures, but red clover can also be excellent under rotational grazing. Additionally, the species of livestock can affect the grass in different ways. Horses are selective grazers and will often overgraze the grasses they like best before eating less palatable grasses. Cattle are less selective, but can tear their grass out of the ground if it's not fully established. Sheep are nibblers and have sensitive mouth parts that allow them to eat leaves instead of stemmy plant parts. Goats tend to graze on forbs and weeds in preference to grasses. Heavier animals like horses and cattle cause more traffic damage. It is also reasonable to expect that high traffic areas, such as gates, shade, and waterers, are going to be overgrazed regardless of the animal species. While most pastures are not monocultures, you can successfully seed tall fescue by itself and have a good pasture. Mixes of tall fescue, orchard grass, Kentucky bluegrass, and clover are much more common though. Bermuda grass is a good warm season grass for pastures, but make sure you choose a variety that has been proven to survive Kentucky winters. Perennial ryegrass is a good option for thickening up a stand or getting quick cover in bare spots, but it generally only lasts two years. Make sure to choose forage type ryegrasses. Timothy is a good hay forage, but it generally only lasts two years in Kentucky, which makes it a subpar option for pastures. Adding legumes such as clovers to a pasture can also immensely increase its nutritive value, and red clover can help reverse the effects of fescue toxicosis in cattle. 
Next, let's talk about some more con considerations for clover and pastures. White clover and red clover are the main legume options for pastures. Clover seedlings can be more competitive than grass seedlings. Knowing this, when seeding a grass clover mixture, you should choose the seeding date, rate, and method that gives the maximum advantage to the species that is desired most. Spring seedings favor clovers, while fall seedings favor grasses. It may also be desirable to add clover to an existing pasture to increase the forage quality and add nitrogen to the system. This can be done via frost seeding or drilling in early spring. Producers may not choose to completely reestablish the entire pasture if the high traffic areas are really the only thing that need attention. Lack of grass cover around gates, fences, feeders, water troughs, and barns is a common pasture problem. Since high traffic areas like these are usually compacted, you will need to work the ground a bit before broadcasting seed or else the seed will not take. The best choice for getting thick, fast ground cover is perennial or annual ryegrass due to their vigorous establishment and growth. For small areas around gates, fences, or waterers, mulching the newly seeded areas with straw and keeping the area moist can speed up the grass's emergence and establishment. One last consideration for high traffic areas is the installation of feeding pads, high traffic pads, or dry lots. If properly constructed, these tools can greatly reduce the amount of mud in areas that cannot keep grass growing. They can also help protect the pastures from rain and drought damage, reducing the amount of reseeding that will be required yearly. You can see in these pictures on the right, the installation of a heavy traffic pad. So for a quick review, the most important considerations when establishing pastures are to control competition before seeding, seed at a depth of one quarter to one half inch, and rest newly established pastures before grazing. Remembering these considerations and following them will give you the greatest chances of success. Thank you for joining me today and learning about the basics of pasture establishment. For an additional information and detailed publications, please check out the UK Forges website's publications page. I'd like to extend a special thanks to Drs. Ray Smith, Jimmy Henning, and Chris Teutsch for their contribution to this presentation and their work on the Establishing Livestock Pastures and Hayfields publication. This video and many other forage teaching videos can be viewed at the Kentucky Forages YouTube channel. Thank you.